Former Japanese Prime Minister Suga announced that Japan will commit to net zero by 2050 in October 2020. And this has been reaffirmed by current Prime Minister Fumio Kishida in October 2021, when he took office and again during his speech at COP26. In order to meet the 2015 net zero targets, I would think that Japan would definitely not be able to continue in a business as usual approach. Post Fukushima, Japan has shut down the majority of its nuclear fleet and has increased its dependence on thermal generation. The current energy mix in Japan is heavily dependent, roughly about 70% on thermal generation running on imported coal and gas, though the share of solar generation has improved greatly since 2011. In order to meet net zero 2050 targets, it will require Japan to heavily accelerate the growth of renewables such as solar and offshore wind, as well as restart nuclear generators and develop emission-free thermal generation. However, Japan may faces many constraints that hinder its ability to quickly modify its generation mix. For solar generation, as Japan is a mountainous country, developers have been finding it increasingly difficult over time to find suitable plots of land for solar farm development. For offshore wind generation, which currently does not exist in Japan in significant quantities, the Japanese government has set an ambitious goal of 45 gigawatts of offshore wind by 2040. But Japan has deep sea beds that require more expensive deployment methods, such as floating offshore wind, in comparison to areas with shallower sea beds that are able to utilize cheaper fixed bed offshore wind. With regards to nuclear generation, currently only 9 out of 34 reactors in Japan are running reaching just the 2030 strategic energy plan targets that the Japanese government has set would require practically all the reactors to be started, which would be quite a challenge for the government to convince its population. And for thermal generation, the Japanese government has committed to shutting down inefficient coal plants by 2030 and transition to gas in the midterm and the long-term transition to coal firing, hydrogen and ammonia fuels. In summary, there are high-level goals made by the Japanese government, but no clear plans yet as to how net zero will be reached by 2050, given the many technological, political, logistical, and economical constraints that have yet to be resolved and will require more time for further clarity. In terms of the current policies that have been introduced so far, examples include offshore wind sea area utilization law that grants 30-year usage rights for offshore wind farms and designates wind promotion zones. The setting of aggressive offshore wind targets of 45 gigawatts by 2040 and a floating offshore wind generation cost target of 8 yen per kilowatt hour by late 2030s. The retirement of inefficient coal plants by 2030. Renewable support mechanisms such as renewable portfolio standard, fit-in tariffs that was introduced in 2012 and fit-in in premium that will be introduced in 2022. Grid master plan studies to evaluate the future development of the power grid to support introduction of more renewables. The Green Innovation Fund, which is a 2 trillion yen fund that is expected to induce 15 trillion yen of R&D and investments in Japan to help Japan reach net zero by 2050. In my opinion, as I have mentioned earlier, high level goals and announcements have been made by the Japanese government but there are currently still a lack of clear, concise plans as to how to achieve net zero by 2050. Those high-level goals set by the Japanese government are dependent on the rate of technological innovation, political landscape, supply chain, and power grid infrastructure developments. However, there remains much uncertainty around the speed of technological innovation, the formation of and development of supply chains in order to reach sufficient economies of scale to bring costs down fast enough and ultimately, what will be the actual renewable build out in Japan and whether it will be rapid enough to actually reach net zero by 2050. Therefore, I believe the current policies in place in Japan are definitely not the final version of policies that will enable Japan to reach net zero by 2050. But it is a good starting point and will be refined along the way as the situation develops. Under our Japan reference case, we are talking about capital in the scale of multi-trillions of Japanese yen that will be required to decarbonize the country. Such capital will be spent on areas such as R&D and the building of new power assets or infrastructure. The Japanese government will use its 2 trillion yen Green Innovation Fund to attract capital from local Japanese companies as well as global ESG funds for the purposes of R&D and power infrastructure or asset development. A lot of such funding will be spent on R&D 
to develop the technologies required for decarbonization in the areas of offshore wind, hydrogen, ammonia technology, and so on. Also, I believe the renewables built out in Japan will continue to be funded by renewable support mechanisms such as fit-in tariffs, fit-in premiums, or equipment subsidies up to a point in the future where the local supply chain develops sufficient economies of scale and costs of new renewables decrease enough such that the full investment cost of renewables can be recuperated from market mechanisms alone. A smaller proportion of renewables will be supported via corporate PPAs signed between renewable developers and companies looking to fulfill their ESG targets. But eventually, the cost of decarbonization will be passed on to the Japanese population in some form or other. And so the Japanese government will have to strike a balance between decarbonization and cost to its citizens.